The final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 7500 in the name of Jackie Bailey on no more page three. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. And I invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And if you're ready, Ms Bailey, seven minutes, please, to open the debate. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Who in this chamber can forget the excitement of the Olympic Games? Just last year, we witnessed the dedication and the achievement of our British athletes in homes across the country. We cheered them on, whether it was Andy Murray winning a gold medal for tennis, or Sir Chris Hoy for cycling, or Jessica Ennis winning gold for the heptathlon. What an achievement. And I remember, as you will do too, the wall-to-wall -wall coverage in our broadcast and print media. This was one of our most successful games ever, and we rightly celebrated. And it was in that context that 36-year-old Lucy Ann Holmes, an actress and writer, noticed that the largest female picture in the sun that day was not of Jen Jessica Ennis celebrating her gold-winning performance, but of a topless page three model. Lucy Ann then wrote to the editor of The Sun, calling on him to drop the feature. And the letter soon became an online petition, now today with over 122,000 signatures. And I can, can I take this opportunity to welcome supporters of the No More Page 3 campaign to the chamber this evening. The campaign slogan is, say no to the wrong things and the right things will happen. Well, we in this chamber are today saying no more page three in Scotland. And I hope the editor of The Sun in Scotland, Gordon Smart, will now do the right thing, and I strongly encourage him to take his paper into the 21st century by consigning page three to the dustbin of history. The Sun is one of the... Thank you, Annabelle. The Sun... I'll take, I'll take all supporters. The Sun is indeed one of the biggest selling daily Scottish newspapers. It is read by hundreds of thousands of people every day, and, and all of them are subjected to a picture of a half-naked woman over their cornflakes, on the train or bus to work, and indeed in their workplace as well. And it's not just on page three, because they advertise the model sometimes on page one, so there's no getting away from it. I am told that the Sun don't print pictures of half-naked women at the weekends, in consideration of children. Where on earth do they think these children are during the week? But you know, page three is a throwback to the 70s. It is a relic of that kind of male-dominated, smoke-filled press room that so rightly belongs in the past. It belongs to an era that has long gone and it is well past its sell-by date. Tired, demeaning, depressing, disrespectful, embarrassing. These are just some of the terms used when describing page three. Do you know, presiding officer, women are not objects. So please stop treating us like we are. Just look at the way images of men are portrayed in the media. Usually men are portrayed as doing things, achieving things, conveying important information. They don't do any of that half naked. And let's be clear, Page 3 doesn't just objectify women, it glories and celebrates the objectification of women. You know, you cannot style yourself as a family newspaper and simply pretend that female nudity is just a bit of harmless fun. Objectification is actually all about power. The strong objectify. The weak or those perceived to be weak are in turn objectified. Page three perpetuates defunct and discredited gender stereotypes that place women as the weaker sex, sweet and silent. I know you find that hard to believe about me. <laughs> but when you stop and think, it is the case that page three feeds into that wider narrative of gender inequality. Yesterday, we rightly deb debated domestic abuse in this chamber. We identified the root cause of that abuse as an abuse of power. And that abuse of power arises from inequality between the genders. Page three affords inequality mainstream legitimacy. Some of us 
our even old enough presiding officer, to remember when Claire Short tried to bring legislation forward to ban page three in 1987. She was vilified. Oh, and yes, The Sun and others described her as, wait for it, fat, ugly, and jealous. Do you know, however they begin to describe each of us that contribute in the debate in this chamber this evening, make no mistake, because this is a movement, a movement of men and women, young and old alike, who want to see an end to page three. Let me give you an idea of some of the supporters. UK Girl Guiding, the Girls' Brigade, the British Youth Council, Women's Aid, Rape Crisis, Unison, the National Association of Teachers, the National Association of Head Teachers, the list goes on and on. The Welsh Assembly has already unanimously backed a motion to demand an end to page three. And let me quote Rebecca Evans, an AM within the Welsh Assembly. She said, page three normalises the trivial objectification of women entrenches equality and sexist attitudes, and, well, quite simply, half-naked women just aren't news. I couldn't have put it better myself. And if you think this is just about politicians, let me quote to you what UK Girl Guiding said. The Sun is a family newspaper. Anyone can pick it up, turn to page three, and think that it is normal for young women to be treated as objects. This is just wrong. It is impossible to nurture your ambitions if you're constantly told that you aren't the same as your male equivalent. It is disrespectful and it is embarrassing. We need to get used to the idea that women are not for sale. And finally, presiding officer, let me tell you about Terry Smith. She's a member of the Scottish Youth Parliament for Edinburgh, North and Leith. Terry brought forward a motion to the Youth Parliament to say no more page three. That motion was passed overwhelmingly, and it is now their policy. That's the next generation of newspaper readers making it abundantly clear that they do not support page three. So come on, Gordon, do the smart thing. Remove page three from the Scottish Sun. The Irish Sun has done so. You can do likewise. Page three does not sell newspapers. News content does, and I hope the Minister tonight will confirm the government's support for the campaign, because together, let's consign page three to the dustbin of history where it rightly belongs. Many thanks. I now call Christian Allard to be followed by Malcolm Chisholm. Four minutes, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And first of all, I would like to welcome uh, these uh, members' debates. This is my first members' debates, and uh, I'm very pleased that Jackie Berry uh, brought it to the Chamber. And I would like to take it from a different point of view, from uh, another gender, and from uh, somebody who didn't, was not born in this country. I think you heard that before. And I can tell you that I'm not somebody who is prude. I'm not somebody who is easily shocked or embarrassed. But when I came to this country and I, bought, I saw the first newspapers, the page free, I, I thought really that we were in another times. And I didn't think it was a place where we should display uh, such uh, uh, photographs. And what I would say about their speeches is when I came to this country, I came into the haulage industry. And I, I was even a lorry driver at, at one point. And I can tell you, I'm very used to their speeches. And when I came uh, to Glasgow, opened my first office, I still remember next to my office in a, in, in a large hall, all their speeches of uh, women uh, topless. And it didn't do anything to me because I was used to it. It was in the 80s when Claire Short uh, uh, brought uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this bill to, to, to Parliament. And I was not shocked, but something happened. I was waiting for a visitor, a visitor uh, coming from uh, the, the north and from the islands. And I was uh, waiting in my office, and I just realized that this visitor was the head of a salmon company, and she was a woman. And it just dawned to me. I said, how would I feel if, as a man, as a visitor, coming to visit a woman and coming here, just coming to the office, bringing a wall full of pictures of men, of men with no clothes on? I would have thought it would be totally ridiculous. And yet, I was here waiting for my visitor to come, and there were all their speeches. And, you know, 
despite many protests from a, a, a lot of people working at the place, uh, I said, we'll have to put them down. And from then on, we didn't have any more pictures in this wall. And that makes a lot of sense. And what it makes a lot of sense, because it makes business sense. And what I say about this, and I would like to, to, uh, to, to have the same message to the editors of these newspapers in Britain, is that having a page free is not a selling factor. And I would like to sell that message, President Officer. It's a repellent. It's, it's something that people don't want to see. Even me, when I buy one of his newspapers and I go in the train and I go page by page, when I come to page three, I feel embarrassed. I, embarrassed. I turn the page quickly because I want to go to the next page. It's not something I want to see. I'm a father of three daughters. It's not something I want to see in today's world. It's not the time and it's not the place. Something I would like to say as well, uh, it's uh, in Dundee, in my region, two weeks ago, like Jackie Bailey said, 160 MSYPs at the Scottish Youth Parliament voted in favour of the motion. And that's very, very important. That's the customers of tomorrow for our uh, publications. And editors should think about that. It's again proper business. It's business doing in this time and this place today, not in the 70s. And they are the democratically elected voice of Scotland. The young people have spoken and we should be listened to. Now I've got a proposal to these publications. We should use that page free to celebrate the great achievement of women of today. Because I looked at one of the papers again this week and I saw that in 28 pages of sport there were only a little corner, just a little photo of a lady. And this lady was Shaleke from Bloxburn because she's been shortlisted for FIFA World Manager of the Year in women's football. But the news was buried on page 24. What a missed opportunity. And that was in the 28 supplements. 28 supplements, sports supplements, with pictures of men. So really, presiding officer, what I would like, my proposal will be to the editor of this newspaper, is I wish to live in a country where journalists can report of the achievement of the young women of today. Not buried in page 38, but in page 3. Page 3 could be the page to inspire young girls, not a page to inspire aversion in this state, but a page to inspire the young people of today, whatever their gender, and to celebrate their many achievements. And now Colin Malcolm Chisholm to be followed by Animal Goldie. Presiding officer, I'd like to congratulate Jackie Bailey on bringing forward uh, this motion and also congratulate the great No More uh, Page 3 campaign, which I believe now has a petition with 122,000 signatures on it. And can I also congratulate all the groups that are mentioned in the motion and also, of course, my constituent Terry Smith and her success in getting the Scottish Youth Parliament to oppose Page 3. I think it is an increasing number of people. It was 43 years ago in 1917 that a group of men uh, forgetting the half of the population that is women, decided that they would introduce page three for men. But I hope now that an increasing number of men are challenging that and seeing that uh, page three is not just negative for the rights and well-being of women, which it clearly is, but is ultimately negative for the well-being of men as well as it damages and poisons their relationship uh, with women. Now, of course, some men are fighting back against the campaign. I discovered a Twitter account yesterday, which I will not name, but on it it had the messages, no to the few. Well, they were quite wrong about that, as I'll show in a minute. It also says, no to those who despise the female form. How wrong they are. I hope I speak for a large number of men who love and respect women in their totality, body included, but who oppose the sexual objectification of women, who oppose the subjugation and belittling of women, and who oppose the rampant sexism and inequality that is splashed across page three every day uh, under cover of press freedom. Now, I'm sure we all support press freedom in principle, but I reject the freedom of men to exploit and oppress women. I reject the freedom of men to objectify and stereotype women. And I reject the freedom of men to deprive women of their rights and respect and equality. Now, the men in 1970 certainly weren't thinking 
of how women would feel about being represented like this. I referred to the Twitter account which said that all of us who are opposing this are just a few people. Well, I think there are actually now an increasing number of men, but what I'm sure about is it is the vast majority of women, because I don't know any women who are happy with page three, except, of course, the few women who uh, benefit financially from being photographed uh, for it. And it's not surprising, of course, that women are negative about page three, because they know a lot better than I do what a negative effect that can have, and there's a lot of evidence and research about this in terms of the effect of stereotyping on them, the effect it may have on their self-esteem, particularly young women uh, and girls, so they know how it is negative for them. And if we look at the website of No More Page 3, we see a lot of those testimonies, including a, a vast range of bodies like the girl guides that were referred to by Jackie Bailey. But of course, the other side of the coin is the effect that ha it has on men, and that also, of course, is something that women experience throughout their lives in many different forms. They know, I don't know, they know what it feels like to be uh, treated as a sexual commodity, to be sexually objectified, to be harassed, partly because of the messages that are coming out from page three and other representations like it. And ultimately, of course, uh, to the sexual violence, which again, research shows is not unconnected to many of these messages and influences that affect men in our society. So it is not at all surprising that the vast majority of women are opposed to page three, but I hope an increasing number of men are. Now, uh, I've only got half a minute left, so I haven't got time to talk about the Unison flash mob. You may have read about that, but the point that they made when they went to the Unison conference is these images in the workplace would be illegal under equality legislation, and yet they're splashed across people's uh, uh, workplaces and, uh, and public places every day. I've got two granddaughters. I don't want to be there when I have to explain why they're being treated in such a different way from boys uh, and men. I want them to grow up in a society where there is increasingly gender uh, inequality. They are not subjected to the misogyny of uh, lad culture and they are not sub uh, subjected to all the other ne uh, negative male attitudes which are fed by page three, as well as, of course, of many other uh, features of society. No one's saying that getting rid of page three will in itself create gender inequality, but it will be another step in that direction. Finally, as one woman on the website said, all we are asking for is to be treated and represented with respect, like men. Many thanks. I now call on Annabel Goldie to be followed by Sarah Boyack. Deputy Presiding Officer, can I too thank Jackie Bailey for bringing this important issue to the Chamber. In doing so, she underlines the vital role of a Parliament in finding common accord across party boundaries to highlight something which is wrong. And that is not a trite moral judgment. This is not about prim ladies of propriety of a certain age who may be of ample proportions, pursing their lips in disapproval at the antics of their juniors. This is about how we wish the image of Scotland and the United Kingdom in the 21st century to be represented, and particularly how we wish women in that society to be portrayed. Let me clarify the views which I am expressing are my, my own, they are personal opinions. To put this debate in context, women died that we might be given the vote. Rent strikes were women fighting for their families and for the justice of fair rents while husbands were at war. Women fought for our right to a university education. And down the ages, women have made sacrifices of all kinds for their families, for society, that others might be given chances and opportunities. And given these heroic achievements, it is no surprise that women have risen to the highest levels of every activity imaginable. Their influence and their success is as impressive as it is beyond dispute. And in 2013, how do we celebrate that? With the consistent portrayal in a tabloid newspaper of topless women. That tasteless and demeaning portrayal of some women is actually a gross and offensive betrayal of all women. Jessica Ennis wins an Olympic gold medal, a major achievement for sport, an occasion of national celebration, a fantastic representation of female ability and an excellent role model. And how does the sun recognise that triumph? It gives greater preeminence to a photograph of a topless woman. So, to me, Lucy Ann Holmes is a new female heroine with her petition to stop this tacky and questionable practice. She's right, and I support her petition, and so do over 120,000 other people. 
But she and I and Jackie Bailey and all these other signatories recognise something else. There is a darker side to this practice, an element both sinister and disturbing, and it is referred to in the motion. There is a known and proven link between the portrayal of sexualised images of women in the media and attitudes that reinforce sexism, sexual harassment, abuse and violence towards women. Research has confirmed that. That alone should justify stopping the publication of photographs of topless women in newspapers. The practice is indefensible. Just as I may say are the purported arguments advanced by those who support such activity. Freedom of the press, we are told, must prevail. Well, as a proposition, Deputy Presiding Officer, it doesn't even bear superficial scrutiny. It is actually more naked than the page three offerings. Publishing material in the public interest is not the same as and can never be confused with producing salacious material to satisfy the prurient interest. Commercial freedom, we are told, justifies this. After all, they're not breaking any laws. If that proposition is intellectually robust, we should expect for ScotRail to employ topless ladies in the catering trolleys, our supermarkets to have topless female staff stacking shells, and topless women at the counters of our banks and building societies. Can you imagine it? Well, it's not going to happen. Because these businesses not only have to defer to public taste and acceptable conduct, but they cannot afford to be associated with practices which induce and reinforce sexist attitudes, sexual harassment, abuse and violence towards women. It's a no-no. And Deputy Presiding Officer, if it's a no-no for them, it should be a no-no for the Sun. The Sun needs to act up to its name. It needs to reflect the light of its title on the darkness of the shadows cast by its topless feature on page three. When groups as diverse as UK Girl Guiding and the other organisations mentioned in the motion and by Jackie Bailey in her speech, not to mention our own Scottish Parliament, when all of these raise the cudgels, then the Sun needs to listen. Because as UK Girl Guiding points out, and I quote, the Sun is a family newspaper. Anyone can pick it up, turn to page three, and think that it is normal for young women to be treated as objects. That is just wrong. Well, I agree with UK Girl Guiding. Presiding officer, in 2013, women deserve better from the sun. And in, 2000 and sun, in 2013, the sun can and certainly should do better by women. This motion is timely. And in this parliament, as in the National Assembly for Wales, we should build on the momentum generated by Jackie Bailey. Many thanks. And due to the number of members who wish to speak in this debate, I am minded to accept a motion under Rule 8.14.3 to extend the debate by up to 30 minutes. And I now invite Jackie Bailey to move such a motion. Could I formally move the motion to extend the debate by up to 30 minutes, Presiding Officer? Thank you. So the question is, are members agreed that we extend the debate this evening? We are. Thank you very much. I now call on Sarah Boyack to be followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I too welcome uh, the debate that we have tonight, and I congratulate Jackie Bailey for raising it with us. I also want to commend the recent motion from the Scottish Youth Parliament, which I understand was the result of a debate expressing concerns about the portrayal of people as sex objects in the mass media but highlighting The Sun's page three is a prime example um, of the kind of uh, portrayal that they were concerned about. And as other colleagues have said, this is not a new debate. As Claire Short would testify, this debate's been going on for years. There have been concerns about the portrayal of women in the media for years. But I think there is now a body of research which explores the impact of, uh, impact of sexualized images in the media and which we, I think, have a duty to reflect. And I do want to reflect particularly on the research that's been pulled together by Zero Tolerance because I think it is concerning and I think it's something we need to listen to. Uh, one of the issues that they highlight was in, res in response to a recent campaign by Mumsnet about retailers, a survey by The Guardian found that an array of items available in major chains, from a T-shirt for a three-year-old bearing the slogan Future Wag to a top for a toddler with a pink bikini appliqued on the front, New Look sells a range of high heels starting at size one, that's the shoe size of an average eight-year-old, and a pair of 16 pounds dark blue platforms with three and a half inch heel, pointed toe and four straps. 
not necessarily a good uh, role image for young women and for girls in particular. Zero tolerance to highlight the concerns about impact of gender stereotyping. They suggest that girls are overly concerned with their body image, that there's bullying of girls who don't conform to st uh, gender stereotyping ideals, and that girls who don't conform to those stereotypes experience negative feelings about themselves. And although we're focusing quite rightly on, on page three, I think we do need to take that wider look about sexualisation in our society, whether it's from retailing or whether it's from other media as well. And I think, if it's brief. Elaine Smith. Thank you very much. I just wondered if the member would recall with me that our Equal Opportunities Committee also conducted an inquiry into sexualised goods aimed at children. I, I think that would be a good thing for our Equal, Equal Opportunities Committee because I think we need to look at the whole range of issues here. I just wanted to briefly highlight the issue of social media and technological change that has led to a whole host of new pressures for young people in particular. One study quoted by Zero Tolerance suggested that girls as young as 12 had experienced pressure to send topless pictures of themselves by text and instant, me and instant messaging. I think we should be really concerned about this. It's adding more and more pressure to young people as they're growing up. There's increasingly websites and online magazines which encourage user-generated content that people can then rate and comment on. So I think this debate tonight is very timely. We should be considering the impact of the sexualisation of our culture. It should concern us all. A survey of 15 to 19-year-old girls found that 63% considered glamour model as their ideal profession. A quarter thought that lap dancing would be their ideal profession. Only 4% chose teaching. I think that's deeply worrying. And I think we need to focus on the negative impact not just on young women but also on how it impacts on young men too and I think Malcolm Chisholm was absolutely to right to focus on the fact that this needs to concern all of us not just women. Research shows that sexualisation limits young people's aspirations, it affects how they think, it impacts on their physical and mental health and it impacts on what should be their healthy sexual development. It's not just an issue for one small group in society it's not just an issue for the majority of us for women, it should concern all of us. And all of us should come together in this parliament tonight and say, page three has been there for a long time, it's been criticised for a long time, but it's time for it to go. Thank you. Thank you. Now call on Alison Johnston to be followed by Elaine Smith. Um, thank you, presiding officer, and thanks to Jackie Bailey for securing this important debate this evening. Pictures of naked or half-naked women don't upset me in the slightest, and nor do they upset any of the men or women I've met who share Lucy Holmes' view that it's time that a popular national newspaper stopped printing pictures of half-naked young women on page three. What upsets us is that these images condition readers to view women as objects, and what's wrong with page three is the context. We wouldn't, as campaigners have said, expect to see a picture of a half-naked young woman appear during a national TV news bulletin, accompanied by some sickly sweet description. There would be an outcry. And I thank Lucy Holmes, whose No More Page 3 campaign, which began last year, has galvanised this long overdue outcry. This debate really is about what sort of society we want to be. And to the government minister in Westminster who naively suggests that it's for adults to choose what they read, how often does he sit on a busy bus or a train where the sun and the daily drip-fed visual diet of women in passive and sexualised poses is increasingly hard to avoid? And why does this matter? Don't these women have a right to choose to do this? Well, of course they do. But we also have a right to not be exposed constantly by the mainstream media to a presented ideal of a topless young woman, usually white, always very slim, and frequently sharing print space with important looking men who, it has to be said, are mostly wearing clothes. I went to Spice today hoping to disprove this theory um, and frankly was very disappointed indeed. There is, as colleagues have underlined, evidence linking the portrayal of women as sexual objects with attitudes that underpin discrimination and violence against women and girls. This has been demonstrated in the UK government's Sexualisation of Young People Review and by CEDAW, the United Nations Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. And on days when I catch the bus, I read a free newspaper. 
And I'm far more likely, as Christian Allard has, has alluded to, far more likely to find a picture of a scantily dressed woman in the news and gossip, gossip pages than I am to find a woman in the sports pages. Indeed, I could not find one picture of a woman in the sports pages of The Sun or The Daily Star, it has to be said, today. And look at the average magazine shelves in your average supermarket. You would actually be forgiven for assuming that most women have massive breasts and they're more than likely, despite the fact that we live in the Northern Hemisphere, to find it not unnecessary to wear any clothes. And these are the supermarkets where we shop with our impressionable young sons and daughters. Now, these images weren't at eye level when I was a child, but the blurring of the lines and the insidious objectification of women is relentless. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Object and UK Feminista for their work in challenging the sale of these so-called lads mags. And I'd like to... Uh, Everyday Sexism's Twitter feed today is well worth a read, um, commenting as it does on Ryanair's latest advertising campaign, which relies on two bikini-clad women to promote their latest, their latest flight campaign. It really does belong in 1973. Uh, briefly... Elaine Smith. Thank the member for taking intervention, presiding officer. It's also just to add that sometimes ordinary people can challenge these um, issues in supermarkets as well and very effectively, as I have done myself. Yeah, yeah, Alison Johnson. Indeed, um, object and UK feminist have made it qu quite clear that there is the possibility of legal challenge. Um, I don't have a great deal of time left, but this takes place in a context. You can have more time if you want. Thank you very much indeed, presiding officer. Okay. Now, these magazines that I'm talking about, they're often found next to sports because sports are still seen by the media as being something that women aren't interested in. Um, and there are many organisations now, including the Women's Sport and Fitness Foundation, who are challenging this. Indeed, the women's interest section of the magazine display might include how to lose a stone in four weeks or how to never have a bad hair day again. You get the picture. No more page three is, it's battling, it's battling away uh, and it's difficult and we have a lot of issues to overcome. And look at the BBC, just who decides who's worthy of a place on a BBC panel show? And I don't just mean political panels, I think they've had more scrutiny lately than previously, but shows that discuss music, satirical shows, current affairs shows, shows that mock the weak and QI. A colleague in my office suggested that it should be called QIB, quite interesting blokes. Why are these programmes so entirely unrepresentative of the population? Presiding officer, it seems far more difficult to entertain, never mind sustain, a career in television, sports journalism, or many of the most public-facing media, mediums that we get our news and views from if you're a woman. We want our daughters, our nieces, our granddaughters to grow up in a world where there really are equal opportunities. It really is time to see women equally represented in the boardroom, in the sports pages and leading our schools and higher education institutes. But while the blatant sexism that is page three is part of society, it's clear we've a long way to go. If the sun won't remove page three, then I say that we call for the removal of the sun wherever and whenever we can. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, call on Elaine Smith to be followed by Sandra White. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I don't often get the opportunity to speak in debates, which may explain my keenness to intervene on members. Um, can I thank Jackie Bailey very much for bringing the debate to the Chamber and congratulate the campaigners. I think, though, it is sad that we're still debating uh, the issue of page three in 21st century Scotland. And it's not always easy to raise such issues due to the backlash from the industry. And I know this myself very well after serving 12 years on the Equal Opportunities Committee trying to tackle the issue of pornography as part of the spectrum of violence against women and children. Pornography, prostitution, other forms of commercial sex, they're all part of an industry which makes millions of pounds out of human misery, and it's an industry predicated on female subordination and objectification, as we've heard already this evening. Of course, some people argue that women choose to participate in this industry. I think we need to be clear Pornography does not exist because of women's choices. It exists because men use it for sexual gratification at the expense of women. And it causes harm to those involved, it um, affects respectful sexual relations, and it underpins women's inequality. And, presiding officer, page three is undoubtedly a part of that industry. 
Now, while research into the effects of pornography has been somewhat limited, a report in the early 90s published by the Home Office acknowledged that women found pornography distressing and women who suffered domestic violence frequently had partners who heavily used it. And I refer to this report uh, in interest for this debate because it stated that, and I quote, it might be that sexually violent pornography is the most dangerous but that newspaper nudity is to a smaller degree harmful and because newspapers are more everyday than extreme pornography, their aggregate effects might be greater. Now, we've heard mention that Claire Short uh, in, the, uh, in the late 80s introduced a bill to try to ban page three and she received thousands of letters supporting her. Some of those told personal stories of rape, others of the damage and insult felt by women whose partners used pornography, and some even spoke of their humiliation watching their partners looking at topless women in newspapers when they had lost their own breast to cancer. And men also um, said that they changed their views when they had children and they thought about the world that those children were going to be growing up in. And some of our colleagues have mentioned that previously in the debate. Claire Short described pornography in everyday newspapers as depicting women in poses that said, take me, use me, throw me away. Pornography, whether page three or playboy, soft or hardcore, says the same thing. What it says is women for sale. And as Jackie Bailey said, Claire Short suffered at the hands of the newspapers for bringing forward this bill. Busloads of page three girls were parked outside her house and she was harassed and she was vilified. And I know this because, and I know about her examples, because I used them when I was preparing for a speech for Durham University Debating Society in 2007, where, along with Francis Curran, I argued that this house believes that pornography is degrading to women. Now, we were debating with a student and a certain Martin Dobney, the then editor of Loaded magazine. We were narrowly defeated, but that wasn't surprising. In fact, I think it was better than I expected, actually, because pornography was becoming ever more mainstream, creeping into everyday media and becoming more normalised and more extreme. However, we might have had a lasting effect on Martin Dobney, who now campaigns against pornography. He said of Loaded, with its frequent nudity and lewd photo spreads, I'd long been accused of being a soft pornographer, and after leaving Loaded, I agonised that my magazine may have switched a generation onto more explicit online porn. His conversion actually came about whilst he was making a documentary and listening to a talk about sex with young people aged 13 to 14. And I'm going to quote him again because he said... In the past, I'd even defended pornography in university debates, on TV and on radio. I claimed it was our freedom of choice and could help add to relationships, but what I saw during the making of the film changed my opinion on pornography forever. The moment I knew internet pornography had cast its dark shadow over the lives of millions of ordinary British teenagers will live with me forever. Well, it's good that Martin Dobney had a conversion on the issue. It's undoubtedly the voice of a high-profile man previously involved in this industry is really powerful. Presiding officer, it's important to support this campaign. Page 3 helps to normalise pornography and eradicating it would be a good start to eradicating pornography from our society and lifting the dark shadow from future generations of teenagers and it would at least start to take it out of the mainstream. I'll finish on this. What kind of society is it where bare breasts objectifying women are accepted as every day, whereas breastfeeding is expected to be discreet? It doesn't make sense. Congratulations to Jackie Bailey on bringing the debate tonight. Many thanks. I now call on Sandra White to be followed by Hansana Malik. Thank you very much, President Officer, and can I congratulate Jackie Bailey for securing this debate and uh, coming on the back of my debate uh, yesterday on Women's Aid, in which uh, the member spoke most eloquently. It seems that uh, very successful in the Parliament on these particular issues uh, this particular week. And having said that, I really do feel that uh, I have to mention this great song. I won't sing it because I can't sing, but I have to mention this great song by Annie Lennox and Aretha Franklin, Sisters Are Doing It For Themselves. And I think that's, uh, that's the title maybe we should have for, for this week uh, in the debates. And thank the, the gentlemen also, obviously, for, for, for coming along as well. Uh, I do fully support this motion, and uh, I congratulate all involved, and they've been mentioned at the, the various uh, universities, etc., have all been mentioned. And um, 
I think uh, I don't I don't want to you know basically say the same as everyone else has said, but obviously lots of things have already been said. But beside an officer, I think uh, from the speeches and from the evidence uh, and what that's been done in the background also, there's absolutely no no doubt whatsoever that there is a link between sexualised images of women, uh, whether it's topless pictures on page three or lad mags, lap dancing, uh, general portrayal of women and young girls, uh, you know objectifies women. There's absolutely no doubt whatsoever, and I fully take on board what Sarah uh, Boyack has said. It goes far, far deeper uh, than uh, what we're led to believe at times. Uh, I know everyone in here has spoken about women's aid and the sexualisation and objectivity of women as well, but uh, when Sarah described the T-shirts, and I must say I've saw these T-shirts uh, when I've been in holiday and we kids of two and three year old, and uh, when the uh, you know, I'm not saying upmarket stores, but certainly stores in our upmarket high streets sell bras and uh, pants for kids as young as six and seven. It says there's pretty, something pretty wrong uh, with society when all we think about is uh, you know, not just women, but young girls. That uh, all they can think about is if uh, they look like a page three model, I, I may say, then that's the only way they can go forward to success. And I think it's something which Christian Allard also touched on the fact that we should be actually celebrating the activities and the achievements of women, say they touched on teaching, as many people here, lawyers, etc. as well. Why can't we celebrate these things, you know, in newspapers and in magazines and have something positive, a positive image uh, for young, young women to, to look to? And I think it, it lies in the fact of not just a page three, uh, but in education as well. We've got to, you know, educate young women that they're better than that. Women are better than that. They're not an object, they're not just a, a body to, to be looked at by men. And when I'm on the train or the subway and, or, or the bus and uh, I'm sitting next to a man who happens to be reading, or sometimes a woman happens to be looking, you know, at the Sun newspaper and they turn the paper and it comes to page three, you know, you are embarrassed. You feel, you feel embarrassed, but you feel very angry as well because you may be there with kids and they're looking at it also. And what does it say for not just the sun, but for our society also, that it's A-OK -okay for somebody to sit and read a newspaper. We're supposed to educate people to read a newspaper. There's a picture of a topless woman. It says one thing that women are objects. It says to young women, I think someone else, it may have been Alison that mentioned this, that they're all white, young, nice figures, et cetera, et cetera, and they're topless. And it says to young women, well, you know, that's the only way I can be successful. And, you know, I would make this ple plead, uh, I would hope I could plead to, uh, you know, basically the Sun newspaper. You know, you've got a real opportunity here. You could be one of the first newspapers in the country to say, no more page three. We've moved by that. We're in the 21st century. We're going to dedicate a page or, or just normal, you know, the achievements that women have actually made. And that would say something to them, you know, basically, not just to the young girls and to the women as well, but it would say something to the media industry. We can actually celebrate women for what they are and for what they've achieved, not because they have breasts and, and uh, you know, they, they can sit there in the newspaper and page three, uh, you know, and look like what they might call sexy. So I would say to, you know, the editor, as Jack has already said, you know, it's not as so much a plead. It's just the fact if you're smart and you want to do something, be the first to do it. Move it on. Take the th page three away and actually celebrate the fact that you don't need it anymore. And here we are, we'll, we'll celebrate the achievements of real women and we'll give a positive image to our re real young people in this country that you don't have to be a topless model to get on in this world. And I congratulate Jackie once again for securing this debate. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you. Now call on Hansala Malik to be followed by Patrick Harvey. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Governor, uh, Officer, and good evening. I would like to take the opportunity to thank Jackie Bailey for bringing this motion to the Chamber, as I feel that this is an important issue, and this opportunity to discuss this issue must give many parents relief that someone actually does care. So uh, a very special thank you to you, Jackie, for, for bringing this to, uh, debate today. There has been a lot of debate recently regarding our young having easy access to inappropriate materials. Uh, in September, one of the leading retail chain banned lads mags from their shelves after the publisher refused to put them in sensitive, modest bags. And last month, Channel 4 aired their thought-provoking documentary uh, <laughs> Porn on the Brain, looking at the effects, um, the effect that availability of porn is having on our teenagers and in Westminster, the idea of pre 
internet filtering of uh, to protect our children has also been debated. So it's a very live debate, and it's it's happening all over the place. Uh, however, what we're not achieving is the the actual goal, particularly about the sun. And I just want to mention briefly uh, about the sun. I worry that the, the the case of casual acceptance of what is uh, essentially porn in family newspapers is harming our young children. When young boys see their fathers reading the Sun, as an example, and the Sun newspaper is not the only one I must hasten to add, it's normalizing the idea that one of the main purposes of women is as sex objects. Looking at naked women and commenting on them becomes a normal activity, and it's okay because dad does it. Now, that then in itself speaks volumes. Even more disturbingly, young girls see that to pose naked for pictures is okay equally because it's in the papers at home and they see it on a regular basis and they don't feel intimidated. How can this not be twisting the minds of our children? How can this not be making them confused over what is appropriate and what is not appropriate. Why is it is the point taking steps to enumerate inappropriate materials that our children have to search for when they can actually find it at home? And I think one of the issues that I take on board, Christian had alluded that to, uh, briefly, is about how do we feel about our family's pictures ending up in the newspaper. And that's not the only thing. I think the thing is that you know, we have aspirations of equality, we have aspirations of dignity, we have aspirations of nationhood. This type of picture in our newspapers does little credit to us. And I think um, um, if the newspaper people are not prepared to listen to reason I think we then we need to take positive steps by actually boycotting the newspapers and that particular newspaper. I think it's shameful for a newspaper when our young are telling the editor, enough's enough. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm really proud of our young who have taken this initiative. And I'm, I'm very proud of them that they've taken the initiative before we have. And I, I really genuinely wish them every success in what they're trying to achieve. And I'm sure this. Uh, Scottish Parliament will do everything to assist them in that process. And I'm sure that the Scottish Parliament would probably be one of the first organizations who will take steps to cancel that newspaper if they continue to produce those photographs. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Thank you. Now Colin Patrick Harvey, after which we'll move to the closing speech from the Minister. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I thank Jackie Bailey, as other members have, for bringing this motion to the chamber. It's pretty rare, I have to say, to sit in the chamber uh, of the Scottish Parliament for nearly an hour and hear so little to disagree with. So thank you uh, very much uh, for that. Other members have acknowledged that the page three of The Sun is by no means the only example of a trend and a tendency that we're identifying in the media and in wider culture. The organisation object in their written submission to the Levison inquiry uh, provided examples of sexualisation or demeaning articles about women from The Sun, The Daily Star and The Sport from just one single week in November 2011. And Levison concluded that all three titles contained what can only be described as objectifying material. All three included numerous articles with no other purpose uh, than to include an image of scantily clad or topless women. And he also included, uh, concluded all three included articles which appeared to eroticise violence against women. And so this is by no means the only example, but I think Sarah Boyack described page three as a prime example uh, of this issue. And I, I think there's something about the context of it. It's not just the content, it's the context. And it, it's a, a form of expression which seems to expect a blandness of sexuality uh, in the, the way that men who look at it are supposed to respond. I think in reality many men respond, as I always have done, with a frisson of discomfort. Discomfort. And I think it's uh, really important as part of a, a campaign to persuade 
the sun to drop, page three, that we have many, many men expressing that discomfort and stating why they feel that discomfort. Later on in the, in the Leveson uh, inquire, uh, report, uh, he, he addresses the, the issues which Jackie Bailey and others mentioned around Claire Short and others having campaigned against page three. She was described by the Sun as fat, ugly, and jealous of beautiful women. It says when Harriet Harman proposed legislation in 2010, she was described as a harridan and a feminist fanatic on a furious rant. And when Lynn Featherson raised the same issues, she was described as a battle axe. Levison concludes this paragraph by saying, describing female critics of page three as fat, ugly, jealous, feminist fanatics, harridans, and battle axes goes some way to proving their point. And I think that is very well put. Reading some of the comments online which are critical of the No More Page Three campaign, I think it's easy to find the same tired old arguments that we've seen over many, many years. It's just a bit of harmless fun. You're only jealous. And I think many members have demonstrated, whether in relation to evidence about a connection to serious acts of sexual violence, or driving the attitudes which inform a countless myriad, thousands upon thousands, of smaller examples of everyday sexism, the cumulative impact of which is just as important in our society. This is not harmless fun. Some of the other arguments uh, focus on the idea that critics are essentially anti-sex. What's wrong with seeing naked bodies? It's celebrating beauty. Well, as, as others, including Alison Johnson, have said, it's highlighting and promoting only one very fixed, narrow, and rigid, uh, and actually quite unusual uh, form of, of uh, body, uh, and a, a, a celebration of only a very narrow concept of what constitutes beauty. But as someone who would hate to be described as anti-sex, I want to live in a society that's really comfortable and confident in expressing a whole range of attitudes about sex, sexuality, and yes, eroticism as well, as part of human nature. But I want to live in a society that does that with honesty and recognizing the diversity of real sexuality, of real human beings in all of our forms of beauty. Page three undermines that kind of idea. Page three of the sun and other expressions like it in our media try to narrow down, confine, and police a quite unusual and, in my view, unnatural form of sexuality. That's one of the reasons that I think we should unite, and I'm glad that we have done, in trying to persuade the Sun to drop this tradition, consign it, as Jackie Bailey said, to the dustbin of history. Thanks. I now call on Shona Robeson to close this debate on behalf of the Government Minister, seven minutes or thereby. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, thanks to Jackie Bailey for bringing the, this important issue, the sexual objectification of women, to the chamber. It's um, been, as others have said, a, a week of, um, of, of important members' debates, um, which has brought us together. And thanks to all members who have participated for their positive, insightful, constructive, but actually, despite it being a serious issue, often humorous contributions. The, 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 I think sometimes using pointed humour is a, a very good way of making the point. I was struck by Annabel Goldie's um, uh, portrayal of, of how, how ridiculous it would seem in other jobs to have women portrayed in this way. I thought that made the point very well. I particularly liked Christian Allard's suggestion to replace page three with a, a page promoting positive stories of women. And I liked Alison Johnson's uh, uh, reminder um, the, of the lack of, of women on the sports pages and of course that's despite um, our national women's football team having a hugely successful World Cup campaign. I want to see more of that being written on the back pages of our newspapers uh, as, as well. The Scottish Government uh, <clears throat> believes that achieving gender equality is one of the, the key building blocks that are required if we want to create a, a more successful Scotland. Um, but the, the routine reduction of women to their appearance, um, or a particular appearance, or a combination of body parts, is a, a barrier to achieving this aim. And as others have said, it can be easy for people to laugh off page three as a, 
harmless bit of fun or to argue that um, you know don't buy it or that the um, you know, or that the, the click of a mouse, the touch of a screen, <clears throat> that people can access a huge amount of more explicit and violent images on the internet. But I believe that these kind of views ignore the fact that along with other everyday sexist behaviour, um, that um, page three forms part of that, which affects the lives of women in Scotland uh, on a daily basis. And like all of you here, I applaud the, the work of the No More Page 3 campaign, which in just over a year has managed to encourage thousands of women and men to take a stand against um, negative, demeaning and limiting portrayals of women. Our commitment to tackling gender discrimination and all forms of violence against women has been demonstrated um, in a, a number uh, of ways and, uh, um, and the, although obviously there is more work always to be done. And one of the key strands of the approach that we've taken is addressing negative portrayals of women in the media. Now, we know that um, one of the, 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 the principles which is enshrined in the new framework of press regulation is that it remains for newspapers themselves to determine their content. That framework has received uh, cross-party support. The decision of the Privy Council to approve the Royal Charter on Press Regulation is an extremely welcome one. And following the Scottish Parliament's unanimous decision to support the Charter earlier this year, we have secured amendments which ensure it properly reflects Scottish circumstances. And I'm sure that everyone here today would agree that getting the framework right for establishing an effective system of independent self-regulation of the press, including cultures and practices, is an important step forward. And getting a framework that can properly respond to concerns of the portrayals of women in the press is um, the most important priority, in my view. And, of course, Fiona Hislop um, continues to take that work Forward. And these measures, I believe, are essential because we do not want uh, our young people, as many have said during this debate, exposed to a culture which repeatedly tells young women um, that they are sexual objects and that tells young men that it is completely acceptable to perceive them in this way. And as a mother of a, a, a young daughter, um, I want uh, her to, to grow up um, in a society that does not portray uh, women in that way, and many others have spoken similarly um, about the, the impact of, of having um, daughters is, is quite a powerful tool at changing many men's attitudes as well. The Porcupine campaign I was very impressed with, and it's a, an innovative project which is supported by the, the Women's Support Project and Zero Tolerance, and it's run by a group of young people who aim to give real and honest advice to their peers about the porn industry. And last week I had the pleasure of meeting two young people from the campaign who have been involved in some peer research into young people's experiences of and exposure to pornography. And this is a significant piece of work because young people are increasingly being bombarded by pornography, largely online, and this includes extreme pornography, which can have a, a negative impact on young people, their perception of sex and what a healthy relationship is. Sarah Boyack touched on this point as well. So the findings of this research are currently being written up, and I'm very much looking forward to, to seeing those findings, but more importantly, discussing with the, the campaign what more we can do. Now, as a government, we take the protection of children and young people extremely seriously. It is an offence to publish indecent material and to possess material which depicts acts of extreme uh, violence and, and, uh, and of a sexual nature. And although regulation of the internet is reserved, we have established a group on child internet safety with representation from a wide range of sectors to discuss issues around online safety. And we continue to work to increase understanding among parents and children about the risks of internet use, and we will continue to, to do that. The um, other thing I wanted to touch on was to put this into the, the wider context and very much related to the debate that we had last night on uh, domestic uh, violence. And I am sure you will be aware that the Scottish Government is currently developing a strategy for Scotland to tackle violence against women in partnership with, with others. 
It will be the first such document in Scotland and will shape the way in which we tackle violence against women in the years ahead. We will continue to recognise the need and demand for uh, intervention services which provide support for women and children experiencing men's violence and will continue to work with men who use violence. But it's also going to have an emphasis on the need for an increased focus on prevention and early intervention. And of course, it reinforces the links between all forms of violence against women, from domestic abuse, rape, sexual assault to honour-based violence and, of course, commercial sexual exploit exploitation. We know that women experience a spectrum of violence and that many women experience many forms over their lifetimes. I think in Scotland we are exceptionally lucky to have a wide range of active and engaged individuals and organisations working to further the protection of children and young people and also to make sure that violence against women remains at the top of the public agenda. I know that Zero Tolerance, Scottish Women's Aid and Rape Crisis Scotland, in collaboration with the National Union of Journalists, will be hosting the inaugural Right to End Violence Against Women Awards in the Parliament next week, another step forward. And these awards aim to raise the standard of media reporting of violence against women and gender inequality in a bid to lower public tolerance of both. So perhaps it's very well timed indeed um, after this debate. I think it's a positive development because we need to make those connections with those in the media that also believe in positive portrayals of women and, and make common cause uh, with them. Um, and I know that there are many who want to change uh, the, the media reporting which perpetrates damaging stereotypes of women and myths about violence against women. And we need to highlight high quality reporting too. We need more women in the media. And, uh, you know, it's a very visible, um, per uh, particularly um, in this place, that we have so few uh, women in the front line in the media. And that, again, is something that I think needs to change. I think it's really... Yes, of course. Elaine Smith. Thank you, President Officer. I thank the Minister for taking a short intervention. I just wonder if she would agree with me that it's somewhat astonishing that the media and popular soap operas, etc., can't show women's beautiful breasts feeding babies if the nipple is on show, and yet we can have all these uh, breasts everywhere else. I wonder if there's anything she could comment on that. I think it's a Shana point Robinson. well made, and it, and it is just part of the... the the, the bizarreness, I think, of, of some of the, uh, the, the morality that uh, in one way uh, feels uh, uncomfortable with, the, uh, with women's bodies uh, feeding babies and yet um, has no difficulty with the morality of, of page three. I think these are issues that we, we uh, continue to fight to overcome. I, I just want to end by um, saying this, that this it requires a culture shift. It requires something that, that we can work to together. It's not something the Scottish Government on its own um, and the, the work we are doing that I've outlined tonight can change. It does mean um, coming together across this Parliament and joining with, with uh, women and men out there in, uh, in uh, Progressive Scotland that want to, to make these changes. What is good, though, is that uh, not only tonight but last night, but particularly tonight, we have women and men across the political spectrum who have essentially said the same thing. I think that shows that we're actually in a good place in that respect in Scotland and that we can show the, the leadership across the parties in making the cultural changes that will make page three something that in years to come will look back on as being, you know, pretty old-fashioned and of its time as we move forward uh, to a different progressive Scotland. Thank you. Many thanks. I now close this meeting of Parliament. <laughs>